if I, once I have the facts. And they said there was a whole series of things, and I'm trying to get that. Unfortunately, we didn't have it for it, because I'd love to share it, some of the high points of what he talked about down there. And one of the things he was talking about was the, uh, um, you have health savings accounts we have now, and you can have so much money into them. But under this bill, they're restricting, they're taking things out that you can't use your health savings account for. Thing, things like Claritin and uh, Benadryl. Wait, what? And, and, and by virtue of not being able to do that, they're just going to raise money for the federal government. That's our money in those health savings accounts, and they're not going to let us use that in tax deductible expenses to be able to, it, we could go on and on. That's why it's so important. Again, this election is not about me anymore. This is about whether you want Nancy Pelosi and Obama continuing to lead. Now, we can't do anything about Obama. He's our president for the next two and a half more years. But we can do something about the direction of our House, and we can do the direction of the Senate. John Racy, with that poll results he just got from Rasmussen, that tells you it's that kind of year. This group, right. and all across West Virginia, is going to put John Racy in the Senate. I hope you're all with him. We had in the House, we're in a statistical tie now ourselves. If you remember, my opponent came out and said he was 16 points ahead. Then he was 10 points ahead. Now he's in a tie. We have 53 days to go. The National Party has suggested and encouraging and very supportive by giving me the opportunity to be one of the 40 people that they're thinking across America they're going to be part of that new majority. They call us young. They call it young guns. <laughs> I, I've asked them, why don't you come up with another name? Uh, but that's okay. But these young guns, these 39, now 40 of us, we've been targeted to be the people to make the difference. Remember what they have to do. There are 435 races going on out there, and there are only so many resources. They have to make a determination. Woody, where they can't, they can't afford to back all 435 but they can focus in on the people that can win. People with business experience that understand what it takes to make a payroll, that understand how to bring projects in under budget and on our design. I'm excited about being one of those 40 that they've selected across this country. And as a result, of, we've seen people that, that have come in. John Boehner from Ohio, who will be, likely will be the next speaker, came in and, and had a, a fundraiser for us. We have Eric Canner is going to put an event on for us later this, that later this month. We've got um, uh, Pete Session came in for us last week. We had Dick Morris. you got to love Dick Morris, okay? <laughs> Dick Morris came into Parkersburg, and we had over 500 people in the crowd. It was so crowded. They had to stop the traffic on the street and put up cones because the crowd was there. People are ripe and ready for change. I know that. You all can see it out there. You're seeing by the ver just the crowd here tonight that wasn't here back in January, back, back in December. You know it's happening. It's going all the way across. They're concerned. That's why you're seeing the whole idea now of this lame duck, lame duck session. They're afraid there may be something. They know they're going to lose the House. They know they're going to lose the House. And they may very well lose the Senate as well. So I, 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 I can't tell you how excited we are. We, this, we're energized. We've got 53 more days. We see things that the, the ability, it's right here at our fingertips. If we could just get turnout, we've got to get to where people don't have just 32% showing up to vote. This is a chance to grab America right back again and put it back where we are indeed, once again, that shining city on the hill, where we're not bowing down anymore to the Saudis. We're not bowing to the Japanese emperor anymore. This is America, and I want American exceptionalism back again. Don't you all? It, it, it goes 
to the core things of what we need to do. Let us mine coal in West Virginia. This war on coal is destroying what chances we have of being energy independent. I spent 12 of my 14 years on the, on the House Finance Committee. I know that 50% of the budget of West Virginia comes from one industry, coal. Coal. If we can mine it safely, we should be able to mine it and be able to turn on every light all across America. Right. But I don't think people understand the importance of coal and the importance of agriculture in West Virginia. The importance of manufacturing that just John talked about, how many are lost and, and have, they're hanging on. I want to take just a common sense approach. Because again, I'm not trying to make a career. I'm there to rock the boat, shake things up. If we can push term limits and we can get something like that, I'm all for it. Because America deserves something better. I want our children to be able to say, we are better. You did it, Dad. We, all of us, have to make a little bit of a sacrifice. We've got to make sure that we show up to vote. Don't allow it to be a 32% turnout. Don't let them steal it again from us. Come on. This is our year for conservatives to grasp it. That's right. Glenn Beck did a fabulous job, didn't he, in Washington when he had a group of It just shows we're not alone. A lot of people think we're alone, but we're not. And it shows just by looking out here, we're not alone with this. So mm -hmm. let me just, uh, again, I just, just close with what we've been talking about. The economy, we've got to get it back. We got to, and we don't do it by raising taxes. That, that, can any of you think of any time when taxes are going up, jobs increase? Doesn't happen. But folks, I've heard enough. We know what's going to happen in January. If we don't extend some of the tax cuts that occurred in 01 and 03, we're going to be in for the largest tax increase in the history of America. And the likelihood of us increasing jobs at the same time taxes are going up just fights the fundamental facts of life. It's not going to happen. And when we're suffering now, I've got four children. Two of them live on the West Coast. I, I, I'm going to venture a guess here that almost every one of you come from families that your children aren't around here anymore because they couldn't find a job. Okay? That's where we get out of our comfort zone. We use whatever God-given talent we have to go over there, even if it's just one term or two terms or three, something to try to bring it back again. That's what I'm doing. We have no delusions long term. I don't want that. I want to represent you and West Virginia to be proud again. And I'm going to do whatever I can from this first district. I'm not over there as we've seen some of the people in the past, what they've tried to do. I'm just a small businessman with four children and six grandchildren <coughs> and a loving wife. I'm not any different than the rest of you. And I want to work for you. I hope you'll hire me on November 2nd. Thank you very much.